Today, we're gonna make baklava, everyone's favorite Middle Eastern dessert. Baklava is layers of phyllo dough with nuts and butter and all that good stuff, and then we usually pour with some kind of simple syrup or honey over top of it. We're gonna start off by making a simple syrup. So I'm doing one cup of sugar, one cup of water. I'm gonna dissolve this. There's many variations of baklava, but it really originated in the 8th century, sometime around the Ottoman Empire. I'm gonna do kind of a Persian variation of this, meaning that I'm going to infuse my simple syrup with some saffron. So, you know, just a nice little dime bag of saffron here. All of these little tiny threads, saffron threads, are hand-picked from the crocus flower. And rose water, used a lot in Persian cuisine. Uh, rose water is literally just infusing rose petals into water um, and then straining it. It's so floral and like using it in the simple syrup, it makes it so delicious. Really classing it up over here in the cooking show today. I can hear my sugar is melted. Drop it on in. And then I'm gonna add the rose water to it as well after it infuses for about 30 minutes. We're gonna go a little nuts today. That's right. I grew up in an Iranian household. My dad being the Iranian, my mom's Italian, and we had a lot of bowls of pistachios around. But my dad always eats walnuts for breakfast with his bagel and cream cheese. So for me, I definitely want to use walnuts instead of almonds and dates. Haven't been on one of those in a while, have I? Oh, COVID, thanks a lot. Need to make sure we pit them. I'm gonna roughly chop these guys. We're gonna grind up our nuts. You don't want to make this into like a fine paste or anything. You want it finely ground, but you're not trying to make a nut butter. There's that word we all love again, nut butter. Let's put all these together in a little bowl over here. Into our mixture, we're also gonna put some cardamom and just like three tablespoons granulated sugar. The cardamom is definitely an Iranian kind of touch. For me, it's something really delicious. And again, it's like so fragrant. It smells like tea. I'm gonna put that there. I wanted to order shelled pistachios. They didn't have them, so I got non-shelled pistachios, and now I gotta shell them all because I didn't do it yesterday. The secret of shelling pistachios, there's a couple for you, a couple for the bowl. I had this whole idea that it'd be really fun to watch me shell all these. I really fucked myself over. The thing about shelling pistachios too is that it kind of starts to hurt your, your thumbs. Last one! I did it! I'm gonna grind these on up too. So they're nicely ground. Not too crazy. Look at that beautiful color too. So I'm gonna save some for decoration for the top, okay? The rest will go in the bowl. By the time you're done shelling your pistachios, your simple syrup is nicely uh, infused with the saffron. Saffron threads, wow. Just golden and gorgeous. We're gonna start assembling. This couldn't be easier, okay? You're making this little mixture. You're melting some butter. You got your simple syrup back there. And then you've got your store-bought phyllo dough. Sure, you could make your own phyllo dough, but why? There are some convenience products that they're there for you. They're convenient for a reason. This is a pound's worth of phyllo dough, and it's so thin, just layers and layers. So you wanna just be very careful. It's very delicate. I would recommend putting like a damp paper towel or cloth over top of it so it doesn't dry out. And the cool thing about phyllo dough too is that it literally is exactly 13 inches um, by 18 inches. So when you cut it in half, it's exactly nine by 13 and that's the exact size of the pan that we're gonna be making this in. So see if you look at it, exactly half. So I'm gonna just cut it in half now Put that there. I'm gonna roll this bad boy up so we can free freeze it. You can see here we've got a ton of butter. So I'm just going to butter the bottom of my nine by 13. So you're just gonna do layer of your feel at the bottom. Brush it with some more butter. I'm gonna do five layers of phyllo and then I'm going to do a third of the filling five more layers with butter in between each layer. Basically, at the end of this, we're gonna have four layers of phyllo and three layers of the nuts. And if these tear a little bit, it's not a big deal. Don't forget, you're gonna have 
a lot of layers of this. I didn't really love baklava a lot growing up. It always just tasted a little bit too sweet to me. This version of it that I've made, I really enjoy. So spread this into an even layer, a little mixture, make sure you get the dates evenly spread in there as well. That's layer one. Layer two. A lot of times it's very traditional at the Persian New Year to have all these like sweets and stuff. I feel like baklava is one of those things where it just shows a lot of love. You know, there's time, there's effort, there's love, there's joy, there's sadness. Baklava, there's many layers to it. We're almost down to the last two layers of phyllo. The first layer is the hardest. Butter is the glue that binds everything. It's the final layer. Can't use that, can we? Okay, look at that. Beautiful. Now, we gotta cut it. People will cut their baklava into all different shapes and sizes. I prefer to do a diamond pattern. It's a little bit more traditional. And you know me, I love tradition. So, in order to do that diamond pattern, first when I did this, it was really hard. I thought just diagonals, like all the way across, but it ends up just being squares like that. You go diagonal across and then straight down. And that'll be done. I'm gonna go into the oven for five zero minutes. The baklava's in the oven for about 50 minutes at 350, it's nice. You can see it's golden, super crispy and delicious. I'm gonna pour the syrup over it. You hear that? I am gonna brush a little bit of it too, because then I wanna garnish with more pistachios while the heat of the oven is off. It'll still kind of bake into it. Ideally, you'll let this rest overnight. It'll taste so good tomorrow. You hear that? It sounds so crazy. Should you roast petals on it now or afterwards? We're gonna do it now. In the oven, 10 minutes, oven's off. Here we go, I'm gonna take this little piece. Now again, I encourage you to let this sit overnight. I didn't do that because I didn't wanna have two trays of this. Ooh. So, look at this. Oh man, that looks good. Mmm. Mmm. This is like the perfect amount of sweetness for me. It's not cloyingly sweet. It's very nutty. It's got that rose water, so it has a nice floralness to it. I love the balance of the pistachios and the walnuts in here. Mmm. Imagine being in the Middle East. I encourage you to go out there and try as many different kinds of baklava as possible because everyone's gonna make it differently. Also, try this, get the recipe at the link below. Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys like this. Sisley, baklava. Three, two. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs>